Oof. Good afternoon, ladies, gentlemen, and people who are not one of those two things. I'm called Matt, uh, and I'm doing the follow-up to my Dingo Pictures video that I made uh, about a month ago now. I spent a long time on that video. I was probably writing it on and off since September. I spent the better part of November just, you know, hammering down the script, finalizing it, and then editing it. I... Um, which is why if you go back to November, I released one video that month. It was my Twilight video, which was, like, my longest review. So that took a long time to make. And then I spent the rest of the month working on that Dingo Pictures video. And I would say it's probably 90 to 95% accurate. Uh, there are some issues with it, which I'm going to discuss right now. Uh, but first, I just wanted to thank all you guys for the support you gave. I, I would definitely like to... Not not abandon, but sort of move away from Matt's Funtime Bad Movie Show. I would definitely prefer to be making content like the Dingo Pictures video. Um, so I'm, I'm glad you guys enjoyed that and are willing to uh, see some change on the channel. Uh, in particular, uh, I want to shout out Foxhack over at the r slash bad movie subreddit. Um, he's been commenting on my videos a while, so uh, thank you for the support. Um, he showed the video as part of a pre-show to one of the, I think, daily showings they do. I'm not sure how often they do showings, but it's it's pretty frequently throughout the week they show bad movies over on r slash uh, bad movies. So if you're on Reddit, I, I definitely recommend r slash bad movies. It's not, it's not, you know, your surface level, like, Birdemic in the room stuff. There are, like, some genuinely really deep cuts that they talk about over there and show in their screenings. Uh, I've, I've definitely learned about a movie or two that I thought were really good from them. So shout out to r slash bad movies and Foxhack. He's one of the mods over there. Uh, if you're on Reddit, Highly recommend r slash bad movies. Moving on, I want to hit some minor notes first. Uh, I said snip and wib when it's clearly snipe and wib, and I said dxf fan 619 when it is clearly dx fan 619. That's on me. I don't know how I screwed that up. I think the snip and wib thing was just me typing it wrong, but the dxf fan, it's just, it's. Three capital letters. It's it's no space D X F A N. So I, I kind of read that as D X F fan and not D X fan. Whoops. You can kind of tell in the video which of those creators I've heard of and which ones I haven't. So I'm like, oh yeah, Catacurus, Phalus, Tennings. Who's Snip and Whip? Who's D X fan one six nine? I also said the Catacurus video was called the worst video game ever made, and you can clearly see on screen that it's just the worst game ever made. I don't think anyone even noticed that was wrong. I, I said the bootleg wiki when in fact the wiki I was using was the Mockbuster wiki. Not something I think anyone would have noticed. I've also been told clips of these movies have been on YouTube since at least 2008, and I'm inclined to say that's true. I said somewhere around 2010, because I think that's when Dinosaur Adventure specifically was uploaded. And I don't know that I could find any uploads before that. But it is entirely possible that these videos have been on YouTube since at least 2008. Most notably, however, a gentleman named Patrick Yarvalov, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, I'm sorry Patrick, said the first Dingo review came out in March 2012, but it was from Swedish YouTuber Felix Reschenserar. I'm probably mispronouncing that one as well. Um, but seeing as the review is in Swedish, that's why I didn't know about it. A Catechorus was, in fact, the first English-speaking review of a dingo movie. Moving on. Perseus, I said it came out around 93. In fact, it came out in exactly 1992. I also said only an Italian version has surfaced. Um, but... Somewhere between recording and posting the video, 
an upload of the German version of the film got uploaded to YouTube, and I knew about this, and I didn't change the video. I changed that script so many times. I changed it right before I started recording, added a whole paragraph right before recording, and went back and added one or two paragraphs during the editing process, just as new information was coming out. And that seemed like such a minor detail that I didn't want to go back and fix the script a third time. So, yes, Perseus came out in 92. There is an upload of the German version on YouTube. So now an Italian and a German dub for it exist. As far as their first Disney ripoff, I said it was Goldie, and that was just because Goldie had the oldest copyright date I could find, uh, 1994. But as it turns out, uh, Aladdin came out in 1993. The trick here is that most versions of Aladdin you'll find online don't have the end credits on them, so it's really hard to find a copyright date. The only reason I know it's copyright 1993 is because there's just a screenshot of it in Phalus's review of it. So, sh shout out to Phalus for that. That also contradicts my theory that the PDF they have on their website is at all chronological. Because it just seemed chronological, but it has Goldie at the top and Aladdin at the bottom. That's on me. Their first Disney ripoff is probably Aladdin. I cannot say that with any certainty. Next, I want to talk about their website, because I was only checking the archive for the English version of the website. And a friend of mine told me the German version of the website goes back even further on uh, the Wayback Machine. So, so I did look at the old German archive to see if I could sort of pinpoint when certain movies came out. But what's weird is movies leave the site rather than being added to it. In particular, Perseus disappears... And I think Aladdin also disappears at one point from their webpage. I even tried to figure out exactly when Atlantis came out, because some of the evidence seems to suggest it was sometime before the Disney version. They don't list Atlantis on their website until 2006. In 2006, they revamped their website to how it looks now, and only then did they start listing Atlantis as one of the films they had made. I sincerely doubt Atlantis came out in 2006, seeing as most records seem to point to 2005 being the year they stopped making movies. However, I'm not ruling it out as a possibility that Atlantis did not come out till 2006. They are currently still selling DVDs on the German version of their website. <laughs> One of the things I cut out of my original script is that a friend of mine has a copy of Arisha the Little Witch in German. Uh, it's how I got the clips of it in the video. And he told me that if you look at the DVD, it looks like it came from Dingo's website. And he's like, I think maybe at some point they were selling DVDs on their website but I didn't have anything to back that up at the moment. If I had just switched to the German version of their website, right there at the bottom, they are still selling DVDs from this website. I need someone to try to buy one of these DVDs. Because it only ships to, like, Germany or, or the European Union. I'm not sure how close you have to be to get one of these DVDs. But I can't get one here in America. I, I need someone who either lives there or who, who, to do it or who has done it. Please get in contact with me. I need to know what happens when you order DVDs from this website. My guess is they'll probably charge you the 10 euros for it and then never send you anything in return. But they're keeping the website up. It's still running, and in fact, it seems like someone just recently paid for the domain name, like, the, to keep the website running. 
in like 2017, 2018, someone paid to keep the Dingo website up and running. I don't know if this is a fan who just wants to preserve Dingo Pictures as it is, their website as it is, because they have not updated since like 2006. Or if somewhere Ludwig Eckert is sitting in a dark room full of old Dingo DVDs just waiting for someone to order off that website. I have no idea why this website is still running, but it is. <laughs> someone is paying to keep it running, and I'm really glad they are. Moving along, uh, Simona Grice. I have heard her name mispronounced. It is Simona Grice. That is how you pronounce German names. I've heard people say Simone Grease, and I think even in my video I said Simone and not Simona. It's definitely Simona Grice. She is a stage actress in Germany. I managed to find her website, and she even lists the work she did at Dingo under her biography. Here's the thing. She lists her time at Dingo as 97 through 2001, and we know for a fact Dingo was running 92 through 05. So she was not there the entire run of Dingo Pictures. She was not one of the founding members, despite what is commonly accepted knowledge. If you look on the Mockbuster wiki, it lists her as one of the founders, but she is decidedly not. She was just someone who was brought on, worked there for five years, and then left. On the flip side, there's Rose with a Haas, who actually did start with the company. Is this my new puppy? He's not mine, he's my parents. He's a real jittery boy. He gets sad if I leave him alone. Playing opposite Zamona Grice, there's Rose with a Haas, who uh, seems to have actually founded the company with Ludwig Ickert. I don't know where Rose Witha became Zamona. Why people think it was Zamona that started the company when it is obviously Rose Witha based on all available evidence. I'm also not sure Rose Witha lasted... What? What? What are you making noise about? I'm also not sure Rose Witha lasted the entire run of the company. I don't know what happened to her, if she died, if she just quit or if she was just working there and decided she didn't want to be credited in a lot of their later movies. Which I do not blame her for. What? What? Why are we making so much noise? Wine! Uh, the Bremen Town Musicians. There is an English dub on the French DVD, and I'm not sure there is an English DVD at all. I can't say much more than that. Regarding foreign dubs of the film, I didn't really get into the history of other languages, mostly because my knowledge revolves around the English translations, and that just seems to be the most interesting one. Uh, however, there are a few that I think are worth mentioning, particularly the Danish, Swedish, and Italian dubs of these movies, which had actual professional actors who have gone on to do other things dubbing them. Uh, notably, the Italian voice cast features some people who also dubbed Dragon Ball Z in Italy. So that was kind of funny. It's sort of that Video Brancato thing where the 4Kids TV cast dubbed all of them. I actually had someone ask me if I could do one of these over Video Brancato, and I don't know that there's that much to say about Video Brancato. Maybe. I'm not saying no. I'm saying I don't know that there's that much to say. Like, Dingo is just this weird, no one knows what's going on with them. And Video Brinquedo, it's like, they were a Brazilian company that made these rip-off films and four kids dubbed it. I do want to say just how interesting it is that all these dubs exist for Dingo movies. Because you think, like, something this shitty... Maybe it makes it to English, or, or you know, the regions surrounding Germany. But not all these languages. Because to my knowledge, not only is there German and English, there's also Italian, Danish, Swedish, Spanish, French, 
and Russian versions of this film. And it's like, who in Russia wants to see dingo pictures? Like, I'm used to things getting translated to my language, because I live in America. But, like, why would you translate something this shitty to Russian? Regarding Animal Soccer World, I am very, very confused by Animal Soccer World. I suggested that it was probably dubbed by Phoenix Games, but in fact, a lot of people seem to think it was dubbed by East West, which I ruled out as a possibility because I couldn't find any proof that East West had done a release of it, but they had. There, There is an East West DVD of Animal Soccer World called Animal Soccer Champion or something to that effect. Don't chew my chair. I don't chew your chair. Huh? You need to go back in the other room. That's what you need to do. East West did do a DVD release of Animal Soccer World. I cannot confirm or deny that this is where the dub on the Phoenix Games version comes from. It does not sound like the people who dubbed Wabu or Aladdin, which is what makes me think it was probably not done by Dingo, but prevailing wisdom seems to think that it is done by East-West. And it does seem a little odd that Phoenix would even bother dubbing this one to English, considering how lazy a lot of their other releases have been. I don't know, it's just one of those weird things that happens with Dingo Pictures. This weird dub comes out of nowhere, And for some reason, it's on Phoenix Games. I do have maybe a theory regarding this. Now, keep in mind, this is pure speculation. I have nothing to really back this up. On the DVD of Arisha the Little Witch, it is crystal clear. It looks pristine. Which makes sense, because it's clear that these were made in some computerized animation thing. Probably not Flash, but like the cheaper version of Flash. So it doesn't really make sense that some transfers of this look as shitty as they do. Like, they looked like they were taken straight from a VHS. And I think there is a very small possibility that Code Monkeys just straight up stole these videos. And that's why the weird dub exists. Like, they look at Aladdin or Wabu and go, Oh no, that's like too shitty, we can't put that in. But Animal Soccer World, they look at and it's like, Yeah, whatever, it's no different than the rest of them. I think it is very possible that these are unlicensed releases of Dingo's movies. I'm not saying for sure that they are, I'm just saying it's a very strong possibility. Because it does seem like most of the movies that got releases through Phoenix had an East-West release. So I think it's possible Phoenix was stealing their footage from East-West. Just a theory. I can't back that up with anything. There's the alternate English dub on the Russian DVD of Goldie. Uh, I think I have a clip of that here to show you. Mother Deer looked at her baby with pride. Father Stag, too, was watching his fawn with benevolence. Suddenly he raised his ears. I think we're going to have visitors, he said. Lastly, I wanted to read you an excerpt from Phoenix's old website. I had this in the script, and I decided it was just a little too jokey. I wanted to keep the video very factual and not sort of derail it into these jokey vignettes. So I I wanted to read this excerpt from Phoenix Games' old website because it's fucking hilarious. Here we go. Phoenix Games, ahead of its time, with a small elite team of six people specializing in licensing, marketing, and publishing of value-priced games, Developing and manufacturing are bundled through outsourcing and collaboration. This approach suppresses our fixed cost and enables a revolutionary low-price strategy. We boast the shortest time required from development to product release in the industry. (laughs) 
Ordinarily, the average development period for a game is 18 months, whereas Phoenix needs a mere 3 to 5 months. With integrated standards in production and packaging, it is now possible to realize low costs through stabilization of variable cost and suppressed of fixed cost units. In the case of fixed cost, we are suppressing development cost per product unit. We are in the case of fixed cost, we are suppressing development cost per product unit by maximizing the sales volume through the low cost strategy and also both diminishing advertising and promotional cost and maximizing operation profits by securing a dependable fan base through an identifying packaging of a series. <laughs> oh. How does Phoenix do it? Software publishers are committing ever greater resources to an ever diminishing number of product releases. In commercial terms, it is seem to be more prudent to invest money in the next Tomb Raider sequel than it is to invest in some new and speculative venture? Major corporations are solely geared to money-making and sometimes lose grip of the nature of the creative enterprise in which they are engaged. You fucking stole Disney ripoffs, dude. The, the, the creator of original products are usually independent development companies that have a creative dream. Commercial success is important, but the product comes first. First, <laughs> and developers live or die by the quality of the product they create. This is the main strategy adopted by Phoenix, to give the smaller publishers their opportunity to launch their products at retail with a huge degree of success already assured. Welcome to the world of Phoenix, value for money games. Th Value for money games. I, I think you can see why I cut that. I I could not read that with a straight face. Um, <laughs> these are the people who made a bunch of, like, not even up to the standard of DVD bonus games. I have DVDs with better bonus games than these games. The main purpose of these games is just to show you a cheaply made Disney ripoff. Oh, God. Oh. I I'm surprised I only had that one Englishy bit in there. The in commercial terms, it is seem to be. Everything else seems mostly correct in terms of the English. It's just. They think so highly of themselves, and it's like, you've done nothing to earn that. That's all the corrections I have to make about Dingo Pictures at the moment. Maybe if, like, a significant amount of new information comes out, I'll share that. Um, especially if I can find out what DVDs they're shipping from their website. If that still works, I really hope it does. Um... So I guess until next time, uh, I'm Matt, and I hope you have a nice day.